We're here at uh, Warriors Media Day. I'm Tim Roy with head coach Mark Jackson. Don't forget the celebration of our third annual Tweetia Day. We're streaming live from the Warriors practice facility here, and we'll have interviews with every player on the team coming up now until 6 o'clock. And Tweetia Day is all about you, the fans, so send in your questions on Twitter by using the hashtag Tweetia Day. That's T W E E D I A D A Y. So I guess head coach uh, Mark Jackson, the first question would be. Uh, are you on Twitter? I know you're on Twitter. I follow you. Yes, I am. Jackson Mark, the number 13. Number 13, your old number. So media day is always fun because it's always uh, exciting and everybody's optimistic. So tell me where you're at heading into training camp. Very excited about uh, this season. When you look, we certainly got better. Give credit to our ownership led by Joe Lacob and also our front office led by Bob Myers. They did a heck of a job through the draft through trades, through free agency, through, through free agency, making us a better basketball team. This year on the roster, and the first time in a long time that I can truly say this, there's a, an NBA quality backup at every position. And that's, that's how you look at your team, and, and you can legitimately say whether you have a chance or not. We are, are too deep at every position. That is certainly some drop-off, but not much. We have proven guys that can come off the bench and have an impact. So it's an exciting time for us. Obviously, the fans are the concerned about Steph Curry and Andrew Bogut. Where are they in their rehab, and, and how do you feel about that? Are there things you're going to have to do as a, as a head coach during training camp to try to make sure that they're ready to go on Halloween night? Well, it's going to be important for us to have them healthy on Halloween night. Steph Curry has been cleared to play. He's doing five-on-five. Uh, he's, he's doing live drills, uh, so he's got the green light. Uh, that being said, we're still going to have to be patient with him, understand when his body talks to him, and because with both of these guys, they haven't played in quite a while. With Bogut, he's not doing five on five, but he's progressing at the pace that the doctors feel extremely good about it. Uh, quite honestly, uh, I'm relying on these guys, and so is my house note. <laughs> <laughs> what will a healthy Andrew Bogut do for you? Hey, you're talking about one of the best big men in the world. Uh, top five center in our opinion. Uh, defensive anchor, can change and alter shots. You can play through him on the block offensively, can score, can also pass the basketball. He completes us as a team. We certainly need him healthy and ready to go. Now, I was watching an NBA Summer League on NBA TV and Steve Kerr made the observation that with Andrew Bogut and then you add David Lee, that you got two guys who not only can pass at the four or five, but are willing passers, and that's got to help your offensive flow. Well, both of those guys are elite passers for their position, the ability to run offense through them. And I think one of the biggest advantages of having Andrew Bogut, last year teams would put their best, uh, most physical big man on David Lee, and that has its effect. Now you have to put that guy on Andrew Bogut, so it will free up uh, a lot of uh, plays on the offensive end for David. You have uh, an almost, I want to say, an embarrassment of riches, but you have options and choices at the uh, small forward spot. No, I absolutely do. you got proven guys, and then you have a young guy in Harrison Bonds that comes uh, highly ranked in the college uh, area, and, and with Richard Jefferson and, and Brandon Rush, three guys that can play that position, and uh, I'm going to let the chips fall where they may in, in training camp and give them a legit, legitimate chance to fight it out. Now, we, we saw Clay Thompson grow a lot in the second half of the season, but when you saw him walk on the floor in Vegas and put on the show that he put on there, and granted, it's summer league. It won't necessarily translate to play, but the confidence and the poise that was there, he looked like a veteran. Well, he did, and I challenged him from day one. My goal was to play him one or two games in the summer league, but I told Clay, if you don't separate yourself, uh, with these guys on the floor, you're going to wind up playing, you know, four or five games in the summer league. So you got to show me and everybody else that you don't belong on the court with these guys. And he took the challenge, had two exceptional games, and made a statement. He's worked extremely hard over the course of this summer, and it's going to be a big year for him. What did you learn about Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, and, and Festus Ezeli in Las Vegas? We could not have picked three better individuals, uh, three better guys prepared for this moment three harder working guys and uh, grown men that want to be great. They work extremely hard and uh, they're the first in the gym and the last to leave. They come back later on, watch film. These are three guys that, that want to be part of a winning uh, organization. How important was it to get Jared Jack on this roster? Very important for us. Uh, last year, I thought Charles Jenkins did an outstanding job as a second round pick when we called upon him 
uh, to start and give us quality minutes. Nate Robinson did an outstanding job, but we needed a proven NBA backup guy. And when you look at his numbers, we got arguably the best in the business that can play the one or two, gives us a toughness, and plays with an edge. He's very crucial to our success. Carl Landry also adds some veteran depth there. When you look at last year, we had really, with all due respect, we were playing undersized guys behind David Lee. Uh, Dominic McGuire played a lot at the backup four. Richard Jefferson played a lot at the backup four. Uh, we were trying to mix and match. Now we have a proven guy that we can run offense through with that second unit. He's a scorer, and he's also tough. It, it, it allows us to give David Lee breathers without worrying about forcing him back into the game. At the back of the five spot, Andres Beatrice and Festus Azili. And I think maybe some of the pressure is off Andres now with the presence of Andrew Bogan. Well, you know, we got a legitimate starting center in, in, in Andrew. And with, with Beatrice and also uh, Festus, and also the ability to put Carl Landry at the back of five, we have guys in depth at that position that we did not have last year at this time. For you as a head coach, and I know you wanted to be a defensive head coach, but as you mentioned, some undersized guys on the floor. Now you have some size. How much better defensively can you be by just simply being bigger? Well, that, that's going to be crucial, but also having Andrew Bogut, a defensive-minded big man that knows how to protect the paint and make guys around him better. We're never going to be lockdown defenders until we improve um, the personnel, but we can be guys one through five that competes, and, uh, and help each other on the floor. And I think ultimately, Bogut anchors our defense. A couple of final questions for you. And the first is just in, from a coaching standpoint, last year you had a compressed camp, almost no camp, and a compressed season. What will you, will you be able to do this year that you weren't able to do last year? Well, first and foremost, my guys worked their tail off over the course of the summer. They've been here the last month and the rules allow you to have six guys on the floor at a time and you can go through some things so that helps us uh, that being said also a, a, a regular camp is going to improve us being able to put in our principles our ideas being able to allow guys to get healthy um, it's going to be important for us so uh, also having live competition when you talk about six seven eight preseason games it puts you in position to, to, to give guys legitimate chances so you're not learning on the fly who's ready to play and who's not. Now we're going to be here over the next week or so reporting after the, the first of the two practices. Uh, what kind of camp do you expect? I expect a, an intense camp, one where we are getting our work in and getting out of here, and one where guys understand they have a legitimate chance to earn starting positions or earn playing time. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we mentioned to Twitter. I only had a couple more questions, but the fans have a couple for you here, Coach. And, and uh, from Blood Magic, he wants to know, how will next season's offense utilize the superior interior passing abilities of David Lee and Bogut? Much love. Well, we will certainly, is a great question, and we will certainly use those guys' strengths as, a, as an advantage. They have the ability to pass the basketball, so we will do some pinch post stuff. We'll do some post up stuff with a lot of action. Those guys, the ability to score and also find guys off of sets is certainly going to be utilized. A lot from the high post? That's going to be an, an option for us. Both of those guys have the ability to make plays at that high post position. From Quazo Fresco, what will be different from this year's season than last year's campaign? A much deeper, talented basketball team where we feel like uh, what lies ahead is, is going to be awfully bright. we got to get healthy, but uh, we have depth at every position, and we couldn't say that last year at this time. Now from Captain Cushberry, who says, with Bogut on the team, will y'all slow down the pace and be more defensive? <laughs> well, he's going to make us a better defensive team, but we're not going to slow the pace down. Uh, we have weapons across the board on the offensive end. We want to get stops. We want to push the basketball, uh, breaking down the defense and transition offense. And then if it's not there, the secondary offensive trip, we'll be looking for Bogut Lee on the block. But looking, ultimately, we got weapons on the floor that can score all around. Again, you can send your questions to hashtag Tweety a day here at Warriors.com, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. And from T's time, do you think Festus – Azili will play a prominent role this year for the Dubs, even if Andrew Bogut is completely healthy. Well, he's a big guy that can be an anchor on the defensive end. He rebounds, he alters shots, and he finishes at the rim. He's certainly even got better from the summer league till now. He's, he spent a lot of time here, so I expect him to play and uh, have an impact 
from day one. The opportunity is going to be there for him to, to win the backup center position. Coach, final question. You, you know the history here. We have the unbelievable fan base. You know, we have over 10,000 season tickets this year, an incredible accomplishment. And these fans have, have been through a number of seasons. So if you're talking to the, the fans, why is this year going to be a different year? Well, first of all, if I'm talking to the fans, I want to say thank you for the support. A lot of other places would have folded the tent and uh, embraced another team, but they stuck with us. And we're really excited about this year finally coming through, um, not just being exciting on the floor, but producing winning basketball. It's a great time to be a Warrior fan, and uh, your patience will certainly be rewarded. And we'll have our first broadcast on the radio Sunday from Fresno when the Warriors take on the Los Angeles Lakers. Can't wait for that, for continued coverage. Keep it right here at Warriors.com. Coach, thank you so much. Great to see you, and uh, let's get back to work. Thank you, absolutely.